Good day, everyone. My name is Mary Ann, and I'm happy to have you with me today. If you joined us before, you know we've been making a variety of 12-inch blocks that you could use as a sampler quilt. Today, though, I decided to do one in Christmas colors, and this is called the Churn Dash. It's a very easy block to make, and it, it looks really pretty when you're done. I put a diagram up here. You actually have just three different blocks in it, actually. You have this half square triangle, then you have these logs, another half square triangle, and the same thing as you go along, and then the center block. When you're sewing these, we're gonna start with the half square triangles, and then we'll do this, and then we're gonna put one row together at a time, and then we'll join the rows so it'll look like this in the end. Um, a couple things to remember is pressing is very important. Press after you do each block to make sure that the uh, seams are nice and smooth. You might want to use something like Best Press or just plain old water or um, maybe a very light starch to keep the fabric real crisp while you're sewing. I have my fabric cut already. Um, one of the tricky things, I have the sizes up here. Um, the four and a half you should be able to get. The four and seven eighths, if you look at your ruler or your cutting mat, it's the little line, if you have eight lines, it's a little tiny line between the next inch line. So that's what you have to be careful with. The important thing with quilting is you have to try to be as accurate as possible because if you're not, your whole block will be a different size than you wanted or it may not even be a block in the end. It might be really haphazard. So try to be really careful with your cutting. Okay, so for this first block here, I need an A and a B fabric. I actually am making this smaller than the one you see up there. That's a 12 inch block. I'm going to do a six inch block now. The exact same pattern down, the exact same technique. So I've got my fabric cut and I did two of the reds and I did two of the Bs and I'm gonna sew them together now. And the way I do that is I take those two and I put them face to face and then I'm going to draw a line from one corner to the next corner. This is a tool I love to use for that. It's got the center ledge and if you put the corners there and make sure that this is right in the center of those two points and draw the line down, you've got a perfect cut. This is something else I like to use. These are called friction pens, and you can get them at most of the quilt stores. You can also get them at a place like Staples, um, and that's where I got mine actually, at three Staples. The nice thing about them is you can mark your fabric, and when you iron, that mark comes off. You don't have to worry about having the mark left on your fabric. So I am going to go ahead and use this little tool here to mark my center on this. Okay. And I'm gonna sew a straight seam down, but before I do that, actually, with this tool, it's really nice. You can do it using, you know, other ways, but with this tool, if I keep it where I have it, right there, if I keep it where I have it, I can mark on each side of it and that is a quarter of an inch. If you don't have this tool, you can just measure down the center, like I said, and just measure a quarter of an inch on each side of it, just with a regular ruler. I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew two quarter inch lines because what we want to do is cut on the center seam so that we have two of those half square triangles. this other one I'm going to fix that up. Okay, doing the next quarter inch line. Okay, 
may have told you before, the same ripper is your favorite friend. So I'm going to rip out those couple stitches that are off the line and I'm going to redo them. With the seam ripper, you just go right underneath the seam and you cut it every couple seams and then you should be able to pull it out. Okay, I've got that pulled out, so I'm going to stitch it where it should be stitched now. Okay, now we have those two seams a quarter inch away from that center line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it down the center and we're going to have our two half square triangles. And we're going to do this twice. We have to do it to the next two also. Okay. So my ruler is going to go from one point to the other. I'm just going to sew, cut right along there. Now I'm going to press it, not really iron, but just press it with the seam closed. And then I'm going to open it up and press it towards the darker color. If there, with this, there's definitely a darker color. If you're doing something where you don't have a darker color, you just need to try to alternate seams with the next block. With this one, it's very easy to just do it towards a darker color. And I just take my iron and press it towards the dark color so it lays flat. Okay. And then, you'll see it has these little dog ears on the end. We're going to cut those little dog ears off before we join it to the next block. to do one more block like that so you'll get to see it again. Actually we did show you. Okay. okay we're going to do it one more time. And try to get your two pieces of fabric as even as possible. this tool again just so you can see how it's used. I just make sure that that little corner is right in the middle of my roller and I'm going to go ahead and mark it again. Okay. I'll make sure I can see it and I'm going to put this back on the line. And I'm going to go ahead and mark the sewing line. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these two lines and then we'll cut it again. Now you may, may have noticed this time I didn't take it out before I cut the second line. That just, it saves a little bit of time and a little bit of thread. I just pulled it a little bit out from under the needle and sewed again down the other line. Okay, we're going to cut it down the center line. Again, you try to make sure your ruler is right on those points. 
We're going to press the seams while they're closed. And then we're going to open them up and press towards the dark side. My fabric is very crisp. This red fabric I'm using is called a batik and it really has a lot of body. So I haven't been spraying it, but you could always spray it with a little tiny bit of starch or water or that best press that I mentioned. Okay. And again, we're gonna cut off those dog ears. We now have these four corner pieces already made, and now we're going to do the ones here, the D and the C, D and C. We're going to do all those now. These are called Wonder Clips, and they are wonderful. I use them to clip pieces together. I also use them if I'm doing a binding to hold a binding one instead of pins. I, I use them all the time. Great tool to have. Okay, now with these, same thing, face to face, and the teeks don't have a front and back. You can use them either way, but the regular fabric does. Yeah, make sure you're doing them face to face. And again, I'm going to kind of chain stitch these. When I get done doing the first one, I'm going to pull out a little bit of thread and go to the next one. I'll leave a little tiny bit of thread in between so I can cut them apart afterwards. Um, and I'm using my quarter inch foot to do this so that my seams will all match. So I'm just running this right along that ledge there on the quarter inch foot. Okay, I finished that first log. And what I'm going to do is a couple more stitches and I'm going to put my second log in. I'm going to put my next log in. We've got four sets of these. And the last one. Now that we have those all sewn, I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart. You can see I left just enough thread to cut them apart. And we're going to set the seams and then we're going to iron them open like we did the others. Again, we're going to go ahead and press towards the dark. This block is kind of nice because you don't have a lot of corners to match. You will have it when you put the three blocks together, but otherwise you don't have a lot of matching to do. just checking to make sure all the seams are going towards the dark. Okay, now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and take this block and one of these and sew them together. And 
just make sure your seams are going, you know, down towards the dark or up towards the dark however they're supposed to go. So we're going to put these, so these two things together. And I do have to tell you, the smaller the blocks, the harder it is to get them to match. You have to be very, very accurate with the small blocks. Okay, that one's done. A little bit of they call it a bird's nest when your beginning thread gets kind of all twisted underneath there. Cutting some of that out. Okay. Now, as you can see, if I'm, so, if I'm pressing towards the dark, I have dark on both sides. I'm going to take a look at the middle blocks and see. It really isn't going to matter, actually, which way I, I uh, press it. If it mattered, I would have uh, sewn it differently. There's just a little tiny difference in the edge here I'm going to take care of before I go any further. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to press towards this side of the block. Okay, and I'm going to take the next corner and do the same thing. Oops, so it's this way. So now we have the top row done, we're going to move down to the next row. The next row is going to use the center block, and we're going to put this next to it. tiny bit off here and I probably wouldn't do anything with that if I was making the larger block but because of making the small block I'm going to try to get it a little bit better than that. I'm just going to take half the stitches out and try to get it a little more even. As I said the smaller the block the harder it is for it to look good if you don't have the seams correct. Press the seam, press it towards the red. When you're making this particular block, you really don't want to use a lot of directional fabric. Now I do have a little bit of a direction with the flowers and I try to make the center piece look like it had the uh, flower in the middle. 
Okay, we're going to put the next piece on. this towards the bread. Okay, so our middle section's done. We have one more section to go here. So we want that to go that way. And this to go this way. So we're going to go ahead and sew this. Some people like to label their pieces with little sticky notes, like one, two, three. And I did label the letter they were and the size. But some people like to go even further and label it so they don't have to keep looking at the design like I'm doing. I'm a, a picture type person, though. I have to say it. Okay. Press towards the dark. Last piece. It's going to go this way. And when we'll, we get done with this, we'll do the three rows together and your block will be done. And believe me, the 12 inch block is a little bit easier than the six inch block because you have a little more to work with. Done. Okay, and again, we're going to press towards the outside the bed. Okay, you can see how it's coming together. It's going to look like the bigger blocks. And now I'm going to take the three rows and sew them together. Now here's a seam that didn't get pressed all the way, so I'm going to do that now. You really want to have the seams pressed the right direction before you stitch them together. Okay. okay. And actually, now this is the case where I told you usually you press towards the darker side. I want to nest my seams. And if you look, the seams on the top and bottom are both going to, in the same direction, the seam lines. So actually, I'm going to change and press these going in so they will nest with the other ones from the center. I'm going to use a little bit of my best press to make sure it stays like that. There. Okay. So we're going to nest these seams, which means one's going to be going in one direction and one in the other. Some people like to pin it. I don't always, but because this is a, a small project, I'm actually going to clip it so it'll be where I want it when I get there. So hopefully the seams will match. I'm going to clip that.
if you find that one of your pieces is a little tiny bit longer than the other, it actually helps to have the piece that's a little bit longer on the bottom. For some reason, the machine will kind of like pull it together a little bit more. Press it again. It really does help to press after each section that we do. And now we're going to press towards the top because that's where most of the red is. And we'll do the last section and you'll have your block. Again, I'm going to switch out here and let me see, these are going that way, so I want these to go the opposite way. Spritz. Okay. This is a really nice block to use. Um, Actually, you can use it as uh, a pillow child. You can use it as something called a mug rug or a placemat. A mug rug is a little tiny placemat, basically. You can use it by, you know, adding to it, adding a border, and you can make it into some type of bag or purse. It's a block that you, it's really versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it. And it's a pretty block. outside and you've got your block um, simple as that and it's really really pretty um, I would tend to use non-directional fabric on the outside um, this I like to use something a little more plain you could do the opposite way you could have you know the colors and the inside looks nice if you can kind of get something that's kind of a focus for it so that's it for today. And like I said, you can add fabric to this side, make it into a little mug rug. This is a mug rug. This is an example of a mug rug I made, all one piece. It's about six inches by maybe 10. Mug rugs can be, I mean, people make them five by eight, whatever you want, whatever you have fabric for. So this could easily be converted to a little mug rug and take some of the same red fabric and put it on the side or put it all around. Um, you know, it's, it's a really versatile block. Thank you for being with me today. See you next time.